Now in this video, let us check from the question number 16 to uh, 20. So question number 16 is from mathematics as you can see in the calculus. So we are, they are given us uh, an integration, uh, integration of this statement and we have to find the integration correct to three decimal places. That means we have to find the value of this inter integration. Now guys, uh, in the examination hall, uh, they will be giving you a calculator. You will be having a calculator to calculate the values wherever the mathematics is required. And I don't have a calculator, so I have already calculated some of the values. But here I am just going to explain you the steps to solve this problem. So that, uh, you know, I will not be wasting time in, time in calculation. But in the examination hall, you can easily calculate the values because you will be having a calculator. Okay. So here uh, we have this integration that is 0 to pi by 4 x cos x square dx and see mathematics is one of the one of my weakest subject I never studied mathematics so um, if I make any mistakes just let me know uh, but I still I think I've given the question correctly but uh, mathematics is one of my weakest area. So here we have uh, integration of x cos x square dx this is the equation. Now the first step is uh, let x square is equal to t because uh, you know that will make this question easier to solve. If x is square is equal to t, if you take d by dx of this, so d uh, by dx of x square will be equal to uh, dt. Okay, will be equal to dt. That will be actually equal to two uh, x dx uh, is equal to dt. Okay, so 2x dx is equal to dt. So we found the value of dt. Why do we need this value? Because uh, if I have taken x square as t, as you can see here, uh, I take an x square as t, that means I can just put this value here, but then I have to replace this one also. So instead of dx, I have, I have to put a value which is equivalent to dt. Okay, so I have to find that value from here, right? Therefore, 2x dx is equal to dt. Uh, then I, that I can find it out. And from here I can say that x dx is equal to dt divided by 2. Why? Because we already have here x and we have dx but we do not have 2. So I can just say x dx is equal to dt by 2. Now you can uh, substitute these values here. So this uh, entire integration will change something like this. Now that will become much easier as compared to before which is integration 0 to pi by 4. Now it will be uh, 1 by 2 cos t dt now as you can see it became much easier as compared to before okay and uh, but here this range will also change the range will also change because here we were having x square okay so now we have to take a uh, square of this range also now this range will also change uh, this range will become 1 by 2 uh, integration 0 to pi by 4 whole square uh, cos t dt okay uh, because we changed t also because t uh, x it was x square and x square uh, is equal to t therefore t will range from t will range from 0 to uh, pi by 4 whole square that is why here I have to change this integration value so it, it will become 1 by 2 um, pi by 4 which can also be written as pi square by 16 okay uh, and cos t dt now what is the integration of cos t so cos t integration is sin t so we can write it as 1 by 2 sin t that is the integration of cos t but the limits are from 0 to pi square by 16 now this formula can also be written something like this uh, it is 1 by 2 sin pi square by 16 minus sine 0 and we know the value of sine 0 which is equivalent to 0 hence it can be written as 1 by 2 sine pi square by 16 and you can easily evaluate this value because you will be having a calculator which is available over there and this value is in if you convert this value in radian so it will be written as 1 by 2 sine uh, 0 0.616225 that is in the radians calculate this value so it can be written as 0 0.5779 divided by 2 which uh, is this value okay 
now you can substitute the answer from this you can easily find out the answer from this and you can substitute this answer over here and you can get the correct answer in the examination hall i hope that you understood this question um, well uh, let us move on to the next question which is the question number 17 it says consider a matrix a is equal to u v transpose they are giving us u they are giving us v and they are saying v with t denotes the transpose of v then they are asking the largest eigenvalue of a correct now u is given uh, u is the matrix which is having 1 and 2 which is having 1 and 2 and v is given but we have to take v transpose so we tra uh, whenever we take a transpose of a matrix then rows are converted into, uh, into columns and columns are converted into rows so here v transpose here v transpose will be 1 and 1 like this okay so when they are saying a is equal to u v transpose so we can write it as a is equal to 1 to this matrix and multiply it with this matrix if you take the multiplication it will become something like this 1 1 2 and 2 okay you know the matrix multiplication correct now uh, we have to find the largest eigenvalue of a so how can you find it out we can write it as a minus lambda i is equal to 0 we know this equation so just substitute this value uh, you know what is i i is an identity matrix you know what is a a is this that we already found out found out so this a minus lambda i this can also be written something like this uh, it will be equivalent to 1 minus lambda 1 and 2 2 minus lambda okay from here we got this which is equivalent to 0 how it is equivalent to 0 just put the value of a a is 1 2 1 2 minus lambda and you know what is the value of i identity matrix is this one so this can also be uh, written something like this so I just did a shortcut here and uh, calculate this value here so this value can also be written something like this 1 minus lambda into 2 minus lambda minus 2 which is equivalent to 0 so this is just a you know determinant of this matrix so this value can be find it out as lambda square minus 3 lambda is equal to 0 and further if you solve this equation you can find it out it can be done as lambda into lambda minus 3 which is equal to 0 therefore lambda can either be 0 or lambda can either be 3 so we have two values one is 0 and uh, second is 3 and since they are asking about the largest values the largest value here is lambda is equal to 3 which is the correct answer to this question here okay now the question number 18 they are saying the chromatic number of the following graph now what is the chromatic number chromatic number is the little two what is the minimum number of colors that you can use to uh, color this graph in such a way that no two adjacent vertices are having the same color let me explain you uh, assuming that uh, this a so i just color it as red so i have to color its adjacent vertices to a different color assuming i'm color them coloring all the adjacent vertices of a with green okay so coloring all the adjacent vertices of a with green okay now again i have to color the next adjacent vertex uh, with a color i mean we have to take the minimum color so obviously uh, this vertex is not adjacent to a and hence i can color it as red again okay but you can see this f is adjacent to d as well as this f is adjacent to b as well as this f is adjacent to a right so i can color i have to do a different color to f because f cannot be red because it is adjacent to red f cannot be green okay therefore i have to make it assuming i am coloring it with the blue so what is the minimum number of color required here the minimum number of color required is 3 so here it is 3 so answer of the question number 18 is 3 which is very easy now the question number 19 they are saying let uh, g be a finite group on 84 elements so in the group g we have 84 elements the size of the largest possible proper subgroup of g is so we have to find the largest possible uh, proper subgroup of G. Uh, they are not defining uh, about the group G that that what is the operator which is used in G and what is what are the elements that are used in G. So first of all we have we should know what is a group. So what is the definition of a group? Group uh, which can be given as G comma star uh, is a finite or infinite set of elements with a binary operation 
for example here this is denoting a binary operation and this is denoting the set of elements now a group uh, should follow four properties number one it should follow that uh, closure should exist okay for example if this is uh, star and we have two elements a comma b which is belonging to this group now i can say closure should exist number two is associativity property should, al should also e exist associativity property should also exist number three is identity property should also exist identity property should also exist and number four is inverse property should also exist inverse should also exist now what is this closure property this closure property means that if we take any two elements from the same group for example let us say if we have this is a group uh, these are set of the elements in the group if you have elements a b c d and so on and this is the operator if i take any two elements from the group if i perform the operator now the resultant should also belong to the group that means the resultant number that you are going to get or resultant element that you are going to get that is sh should also be in the group second is associativity property that means this operator should be associative that means if i say a star b star c can also be written as a star b star c so this associative Property property should also be followed. Number third is identity property. That means there should exist an identity element. I can say that identity element is A. So it will be E star A should be equal to A star E should be equal to A itself. So this identity element should exist. Uh, with if we uh, perform this operation with the A or any element in the group with the identity element, then we should get the same element again. And inverse should exist. That means if I do A star B or b star a then we should get the identity element that means there should exist inverse of an element in such a way that uh, if you perform the same operation then you can get the identity element if all these operations are followed then we can say that uh, a group uh, that it is a group i mean this uh, for, for this particular uh, set and for this particular operator we, there exists a group now for every group there are two proper subgroups for every group there are two proper subgroups which are the group itself and the trivial group which is having this identity element only okay but a part of this there are other subgroups that can also e exist what are the proper subgroups the proper subgroups are the groups which should be a subset of this as well as that those proper subgroups should also follow all these four conditions okay if a proper subset of g which should which is also following all these four conditions then if it exists then that is called as a proper subgroup now for this given question you should know what is a lagrange's theorem if you know what is a group now you should know to solve this question that on a group what is a lagrange's lagrange's theorem says lagrange's theorem says that uh, in in a group uh, whatever the subgroups will be they will be a factor of the number of elements they will be a factor of number of elements okay uh, the size of those will be factor of number of elements and that is also called as a order now for example here they are saying uh, let g be a finite group on 84 elements that means the order of g is 84 okay correct and this uh, identity element the order of this identity element here that is 1 now they are saying whatever the order of the group is so for this group if there exists any subgroup if there are any proper subgroup then for those proper subgroups the sizes will always be a multiple of 84 for example let us say this 84 can be uh, uh, factorized with the number 1 2 4 21 and 42 that means it can be divided with these numbers which is 1 2 4 21 and 42 now where 1 is the size 1 you can see uh, this, is a, this is group G which is 84 which is the group itself uh, 84 is there and size 1 both these are uh, exactly uh, this is called as a trivial subgroup this is trivial proper subgroup and this is the group itself now any proper subgroup of this group will be having the elements as 2 or it will be having 4 elements or it will be having 21 elements or it will be having 42 elements therefore any proper subgroup which exists for this given group will be having the elements which are a factor of this which is which can it can have either two elements or it can have either four elements or it can have either 21 elements or it can have either 
42 elements in the same way if the size of the group is 80 that means the order of the group is 18 now if you take the factors of this 80 now uh, the subgroups the proper subgroup that exist they will only be uh, size will only be equivalent to one of those factors okay now here they are asking what is the largest possible uh, proper subgroup the largest possible proper subgroup is 42 so it will be 42 here but um, uh, does 42 exist it, it is not guaranteed because still uh, we don't know i mean uh, lagrange's theorem like says that uh, the proper subgroups can be of these sizes but it does not say that it does not guarantee that the, for, the size 42 will be a proper subgroup of this or not okay for that you have to go and read out the lagrange's theorem uh, from our videos now here because the uh, size is 42 so that will be largest possible sub uh, proper subgroups but still size 21 subgroup is also possible size 4 subgroup is also possible size 2 subgroup is also possible and size 1 is trivial it exists for every uh, group and the group itself it is also exists for any group so here size 42 21 4 and 2 they, these kind of sub, uh, subgroups with these orders are possible and here the largest possible subgroup proper subgroup is 42 okay now in the question number 20 they are saying the post order traversal of a binary tree is so they are giving the post order traversal post order traversal okay which is 8 9 6 7 4 5 2 3 1 and they are giving us an in order traversal so in order traversal is 8 6 9 4 7 2 5 1 3 they are saying the height of a tree is the length of the longest path from the root to any leaf the height of the binary tree is for this given binary tree what is the height now you should know what is the pre-order what is the in order and what is the post order so pre-order can be written as root left right in order can be written as root uh, so left root right and post order can be written as left right so sorry post order can be written as left right and root okay so the only thing that will change is the position of root now from here because they are giving the post order the post order from post order we can find out the root and from in order we can find out what are the left children and what are the right children okay now for example here from the post order uh, because post order in the last we always contain the root so here we know that root is one so we can create one as a root now in order contains the left children and the right children so in the left of one we have these numbers in the right of one we have this number so in the right of one we have three now in the left of one we have all these numbers which are eight six nine four seven two five out of these three uh, which one is the root root is two so here we'll be having two as a root so in the uh, left we'll be having two and the right of two is five so five will be here and in the left of 2 we will be having 8 6 9 4 7 so we have 8 6 9 4 7 out of these three numbers uh, it's all done 4 is the root okay so 4 will be here now we have the element 7 6 8 9 6 8 6 9 they will be in the left of 4 because 4 is here so in the left of 4 we have this so 8 6 9 will be here okay now in the 8 6 9 you can see uh, and 7 uh, 7 is here okay so in 8 6 9 you can see 8 6 9 uh, in post order what is the root root is 6 so we can see 6 is the root but in the left of 6 is 8 and in the right of 6 is 9 so you can find it out from here that what is the left subtree and what is the right subtree with the help of uh, in order and with the help of post order you can find out what is the root so we need the help of both of them right, right? you can also refer my videos on uh, data structures and algorithms to study this concept because I've already taught it in a complete detail now what is uh, when they are saying the height of the binary tree that is the longest path from leaf to root they are saying the height of a binary tree is the longest path from root to leaf so this is the root and this is the leaf so these are the longest paths what is the longest path that is 1 2 3 and 4 or you can call it as 1 2 3 and 4 so the length of the longest path is 4 so the answer to this question is 4 so I hope you understood this properly now let us move on to uh, the next 
section where I'm going to discuss the question number 21 to 25 and then we will conclude all the one mark questions after that we will start the two mark questions.